Hello everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and welcome back to my Biology 121 Anatomy and Physiology 1 course. This is podcast 1.4a, Homeostasis and Feedback Systems. Homeostasis is the body's ability to maintain a balanced internal environment. This balance or equilibrium is maintained through the interactions of the body's regulatory systems in response to changes constantly taking place in the external and internal environment. Every level of the body's organization participates in this dynamic process in order to keep the body's internal environment within a normal range. Some examples of bodily processes regulated through homeostasis include blood pressure, body temperature, and blood glucose level. Homeostasis plays a major role in maintaining the chemical composition and volume of the various body fluids, which are the water-based aqueous solutions found inside and outside cells. Intracellular fluid, or ICF, is the fluid located inside body cells, and the extracellular fluid, or ECF, is found outside the cells. Interstitial fluid is the ECF found between the cells of tissues and is considered to be the body's internal environment. Chemical substances such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, glucose, and ions are continually moving back and forth between the interstitial fluid and blood plasma in order to allow body cells to properly function. There are a variety of ECFs throughout the body, including blood plasma, the fluid inside blood vessels, lymph inside lymphatic vessels, synovial fluid inside joints, and cerebrospinal fluid surrounding the brain and spinal cord. Now let's explore the ways that homeostasis is regulated. When conditions change in either the external or internal environment, The nervous system and the endocrine system are the two systems that frequently respond to and correct the change in order to return the condition back within the normal range. Regulation is performed very quickly, usually in milliseconds, by the nervous system through the generation of electrical signals called action potentials, or nerve impulses, that are sent to organs that bring the condition back to normal. In contrast, regulation is performed more slowly, seconds, minutes, or hours, by the endocrine system through the secretion of hormones by glands into the blood. Regulation of homeostasis is carried out through a variety of feedback systems, also called feedback loops. A feedback system involves the continual monitoring, evaluating, and changing of a body condition to keep it within its normal range. The system's response is to feed back information to change the controlled condition. A great analogy for a feedback system is how our home thermostat works to maintain a comfortable room temperature on a hot day. The thermostat continually monitors the air temperature inside the house and makes changes by turning on the home's cooling system if the temperature rises above the set point. In the body, the condition that is monitored is called the controlled condition, and a stimulus is anything that changes the condition. Regardless of the type of feedback system, they all have three components in common, a receptor, a control center, and an effector.
When a stimulus disrupts homeostasis, it will increase or decrease the controlled condition. A receptor constantly monitors the controlled condition and when changes occur, sends input about the change to the control center. Receptors are usually sensory nerve cells that are specialized to respond to specific types of stimuli, such as chemical concentration, temperature, etc., and the input that they send is in the form of nerve impulses or other chemical signals. This is called an afferent pathway because the input is flowing toward or at the control center. The control center determines the particular set point for the controlled condition, which is the range of values in which the condition is to be regulated. It evaluates the input it receives from the receptors and generates the corresponding output in the form of nerve impulses or hormones needed to restore the condition back to its normal range. The most common control center in the body is the brain. This is called an efferent pathway because the output is flowing away or exiting from the control center. An effector is the third basic component of a feedback system and it receives the output sent from the control center and generates a specific response or effect that can bring the controlled condition back to its original set point. Just about any of the body's tissues or organs have the ability to act as effectors, but they are frequently muscles or glands. The effect of muscles is to contract, and the effect of glands is to secrete a hormone or other chemical signal. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to contact me by email at rjswatsk at hack.edu if you have any questions or comments about the course.